Welcome back to Pentagram Prime, everyone. Picking up roughly where we left off on page 255 of Marsden and Hoffman, we are now tasked with exercise number 9 that asks us for the residue of 1 over z squared sine z at z equals 0. Let's explore our options by separating the function that we'll call f of z into g of z equals 1 in the numerator and h of z equals z squared sine z in the denominator. We then take a few derivatives of g of z and then evaluate them at well, it doesn't matter where we evaluate them at because everything is the same for all values of z in the complex plane. Thus, focusing on z equals 0, we see that g of 0 is 1, the derivatives of g of z evaluated at z equals 0 are also 0, and the same goes for all higher derivatives of g. Focusing on the denominator of f of z, we see that h of z equals 0 when evaluated at z equals 0. Taking the first derivative of h of z, we find that evaluating it at z equals 0 gives us 0. The second derivative is a little more time consuming for h of z, but we brew some more coffee, keep track of a growing set of terms, and find that h double prime of 0 also equals 0. Moving on to h triple prime, we juggle upwards of 5 terms this time. While religiously keeping track of our pluses and minuses, we begin to see signs of a non-zero third derivative at our singular point. Evaluating h triple prime at z equals zero gives us six, and we can safely say that f of z has a third order pole at z equals zero. Now, you may be tempted to use proposition 416 on page 248 at this point because we are dealing with a third order pole as evidenced by the behavior of the derivatives for h of z. The problem with 416 is that we can't remove the singularity at z equals 0 using the methods listed. I dare you to try because I did and it was a huge waste of time. However, proposition 417 on pages 249 and 250 only requires a non-zero value for g of z at the singularity and that the functions g and h be analytic at the singularity in order for us to determine the value of the residue in question. Since all of the derivatives of h of z below the third derivative are 0, we will set up the formula found on page 250 with k equal to 3. Just a bunch of derivatives and a 3 by 3 determinant, and we're out of here. However, this particular formula requires, in our case, that we evaluate the fourth and fifth derivatives of h of z, so we're heading back to our respective high school calculus textbooks and my coffee maker. Having spoken out against using online calculators to do the heavy lifting for you on some of these problems in lieu of pawning it off as your own work, I should clarify that I am never against using such devices as a way of checking for errors after sketching out the work on paper. Fourth derivative of h of z spells like a zero at the singularity, and bang, pow, boom, it is equal to zero when evaluated at z equals zero. Coming up on writer's cramp now as we work out the terms of this, the fifth and hopefully final derivative of h of z for this problem. Just all of the stuff that some of us slept through during first period honors AP calc, but now there's a ton of it. I think I see a non-zero term, and wham, it's a negative 24 h of z evaluated at z equals zero. Plugging in the values for the required derivatives, we now have a 3 by 3 determinant to evaluate. While I do take pride in the animation that I've done relative to matrix algebra in the past, it does take away from time that I could be spending on concepts more closely related to things like complex analysis. If you have further questions about the formulas now on screen, then feel free to hit me up. Otherwise, evaluation of the 3 by 3 determinant gives us positive 1 over 6 for the residue of 1 over z squared sine z at z equals 0, and thanks to everyone who helped me recently claw my way past 200 subscribers. Till next time, this is Pentagram Prime signing off.